how does the Inquisition move to Mexico? What's it trying to achieve then? And, and mm. who was there for them to be victims of an Inquisition? Yeah, or saved by the Inquisition. Um, remember, from the point of view of the Inquisition, they were they were they were they were doing you a tova, you know. They were they were helping you out. Um, you were lost to heresy, and they're going to save you from heresy. So um, it, it it's hard to say that without a lot of sarcasm. Uh, but but that is the way the Inquisition saw itself. So I think that's always important to like appreciate how you know people who you don't you don't revere uh, still see see what they're doing. But it, so it it I'd say in two parts. There's two parts to this. Um, one is that at, although the Inquisition is founded to deal with, the Inquisition in Spain is founded to deal with um, conversos who are backsliding, who are Judaizing, who are going back to their Jewish ways after their conversion, um, it quickly expands its, its net and its scope. Um, for instance, after Luther in, in 1517, Ninety with you know basically breaks away from the church. They're all of a sudden very concerned about Lutherans, um, people who have weird ideas from a Catholic perspective about the Bible and about different religious ideas. So they start expanding who they're interested in to include other types of heresies, um, not just Judaizers. And in the New World, you have a lot of areas of concern. Um, you have thousands and thousands of, of, of Christians who are arriving, Spaniards who are arriving, who are far away from home. And when you're far away from home and the norms of home, you start dabbling, you start distancing yourself, all sorts of bad behaviors. And, um, and, and so that, that opens up one area. They're really concerned for the Christianity of the Christians that are going over there and living Again, these new lives, these very different different contexts. Um, so there's that. Um, there is real fear of contagion, of of spiritual um, impurity that's going to be absorbed by Christians from the indigenous populations, um, and from the the Af the enslaved Africans that are being brought over at this time. Uh, you know, so you you this is really the, again the birth of globalization is also also the birth of large scale traffic in human lives, forced labor. Um, that's true of the indigenous populations. It's true of the Africans, but those people had a very rich spiritual life, one that the Christians the 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 Inquisition saw as dangerous, and so they'd be concerned that that Europeans would absorb voodoo and all sorts of indigenous religious ideas. But there was another piece, and this you can see in where the Inquisition goes. There was an anxiety that of the Spaniards and Portuguese merchants, we'll get to Portuguese in a second, of those people coming to the Americas, a lot of the people coming are of Jewish background, and guess what? They're heretics, or they're secret heretics, or they're potential heretics, or they're spreading heresy. And so you see a, a bishop in, in, in Santo Domingo writing back to the crown and saying, you're letting in all these, all, these, all these heretics. And he's not talking about Protestants. He's talking about people that he perceives as Jews. Um, and, so the, in, and so they set up inquisitions in the main colonial centers of power and commerce, Mexico City in 1570, and soon after in Lima, Peru, uh, which you know, had jurisdiction over all of South America. And when there's a lot of, um, when there's a, even a greater increase, a few decades later, they set up in, in Cartagena de Indias, which is in modern day Colombia on the Caribbean coast. Um, that's another one. So, and th this had a very important Portuguese piece. The, in 1492, when, when, when the choice is you can stay if you convert, or you can leave and stay Jewish. So many, many people had no other options, made their decision, and stayed as Catholics in Spain. Um, everyone else, we know where they go, right? They go to the places, become the great, great Sephardic communities of, of, the, of the Gola. They go to Morocco, they go to Italy, they go to Turkey, they go to Israel, 
um, and so on and so forth. Um, but the biggest number goes across the mountains to Portugal. But that's a short-lived haven. For Not for this podcast, for maybe for another time, uh, we can talk about the intricacies of what happened there. But the king of Portugal um, forcibly, five years later, forcibly converts all of the Jews in Portugal into, into Catholicism. And, and so all of a sudden, this group of people who gave up everything in Spain to stay Jewish are stuck in Portugal as Catholics. So we're dealing with people who are ready. This, this, is, this has been noted by other historians. Yosef Chaim Rishalmi in, in particular um, noted this. These are ready people who are much more committed to holding on to their Judaism. But now en masse, not in trip, not in you know trickles, but in en masse, they've all become Christian. This includes, you know, the Shochet and the Moel and the you know and the Malamid and all these people, right, are all now Jewish. Um, they're not allowed to. They're all now Christian. They're not allowed to go to synagogues. Synagogues are turned into churches, so on and so forth. They can't own Jewish books, but they live in the same neighborhoods. They're going to keep on doing the same jobs, marry the same people, mostly because unless you're in the top, top economic class, um, no one's going to marry you, right? You're, you're not the very, very rich married nobility. But outside of that, you're going to marry within your social economic class, and that's other conversos. And their business, the reason why they went to Portugal, the reason why they were welcome to Portugal, the reason why the king couldn't let them go was because they were the, the agents to a great extent of a lot of the international commerce. Um, and they that brings them to the Americas in very large numbers. They're going there um, because there's business to be made. There's opportunities to be made. Um, and the Inquisition is very aware of that. And so soon, um, by the mid-16th century, and certainly after 1580, when the crowns are united, um, when you when a person outside of Portugal calls someone Portuguese, what they really mean is Jewish. And what they really mean by Jewish is conversa, right? So th this becomes kind of a conflation of, um, of the status. And so, again, you see throughout South America priests and bishops complaining, all these Portuguese, Portuguese are everywhere. They're bringing all their terrible practices and they're, they're, um, there's even complaints about them turning the their slaves Jewish, turning the Indians Jewish, all these kind of rumors that circulate. Um, and, and so the Inquisition is there to, to limit that, to crack down on it. And, and so that's, you know, really in, in a, a big picture view, that's that's what's going on. And that's why, um, you know, it, it's either in ma major political centers or places like Cartagena that are this very important port, right, that, for the Caribbean. So, because um, that's where these, these former Jews, conversos are moving. Some of those people care a lot about their Judaism and a lot of them didn't. But they were still perceived as Jews. They were still socially living like Jews in the sense that they married each other. They did certain businesses which were associated with Jews, right? They weren't big landholders. They weren't um, officers in the army. Um, they were merchants. And that was seen as kind of a Jewish role, even though there were plenty of non-Jewish ones, right? Um, so that's, that's and that gets us, I think, a little bit to the Carvajals, if you want to go there. But yes, uh, that's that's a, you're, you're, I'm not sure I've been pronouncing it correctly. 